The second, we're going to talk about four by equation. In the equation cases, I have three different formulas. The number one formula is G6. Number two is Kenji formula. Number three is a school formula. Let's start with number one. Four by equation is the most common case in Asia. We have about 60% of uh, equation. And in this equation case, 60% are very easy. You take out the T's, you give it a liner, you're done. And we have the other 30% extraction case are advanced, quite difficult. The last 10% are very, very difficult. So we are start with easy case. When you go into close the extraction space, make sure you remember we use the pushing force because the liner is good for pushing. So how do you solve this by messing up protrusion, severe protrusion lip, flaring upper and lower incisor? Our treatment plan is four by extraction, and I want like this. If you look at the cream check, anything is possible in cream check. It look perfect. And we went ahead, we, we go ahead and put an attachment, and that's what we get in 14 months when we finish the first stage. First stage means the first aligner stage. Then the second stage is the refinement stage, something like that. 14 months after we finish the first stage, if you look at the profile change, it's a huge change. Look at that incisor. Seven millimeter retraction of that incisor. That's why, if you look at the profile, the lip change, look at a huge lip change. Uh, uh, oh, oh, okay. Did you see that morph right here? Beautiful profile change. And then, the only thing I did was hand over the plastic package. That's it for the 14 months. Is that easy? And 14 months later, that's the result. And the rest is just a refinement. A minor change should be okay. Beautiful. Is that good or bad? Well, if you consider that we only keep hand over the plastic bag to get this result, I think that's remarkable. It's going to be a good one. A little bit open by in the posterior. I think that's okay. I think that's good. For the time and effort you put in to get this result, I'm pretty happy about it. And that's G6 extraction formula. And let me review the G6 for you. I know a lot of people already know the G6. When you take out a teeth, you try to close the space. Normally, you will get this one. Because tipping is because the aligner grab the crown, so you get the tipping. So you do need to build in a pushing surface to counteract this tipping moment. So with this pushing surface, you'll be able to move the root, upright the root. In the canine, it's a similar. So that is my first equation formula called formula one. In the K9, we build in two pushing surfaces that create a different moment, an equal and opposite moment, and that can move the teeth backward. That's the G set. And oh, okay. Let's stick to the basic. Let me just focus on the K9 and show you how we did it. First, the first attachment, you have the surface from the pushing surface, the center of resistance is about 15 millimeter. And the second one in the behind, 
is about 20 millimeter. So the first moment is F1 multiple L1, which is moment of force. The other one is counter moment, which is the longer arm, which is 20 millimeter, multiple to F2. And let me ask you, if we want a cheap body movement, what is the relationship between MC and MF? If you want a body movement, MC has to equal to MF. Equal. Otherwise, how can you get body movement? But people will argue, if the MC equal to MF, how can you move the cannula backward? That's because the F1 is bigger than F4. Remember? F2, remember? The L1 is shorter than L2. So F1 has to be equal, uh, bigger than F2. So F1 minus F2 is F and neck force, which is the force to move the canine backward. And how does it work? It works in two different ways. Number one is body, pure body movement. If you want to do body movement, then this whole surface will resolve at the same time. And think about it. This is a huge resorption surface. Sometimes it's quite difficult. Number two is divide and conquer. Instead of one stage to move bodily, we can divide into two stages, which is tipping and then uprighting and tipping and uprighting. And at the end, you get a body movement, which is like a bag, tipping plus uprighting. And if I want to do it, I, I prefer the second one because it's easy. It's like a divide and conquer. The Roman, they are pretty good at it. So we are using a smart track, which is the material that we use, and design a smart force. Finally, we distribute that force into different stage, called smart stage. That's the three circle to make this aligner work. And that is what John Martin talked about four years ago in AAO. I really enjoy his lecture. He is very, very smart to give that lecture. So I, I truly enjoy it. So back to this G6. We also need to put build in the intrusion force because once we retract the incisor, we tend to intrude the incisor. So you need to have the intrusive force in order to get the whole system work. So that is the G6 formula in my office. Smart track, smart force, and smart stage. Take a photo. This is an important slide. And it's very complicated. And I, I figured out, the more complicated my slide is, the more respect I get. So for the rest of my life, I'm going to make my slide as complicated as possible so I can get more respect from you. Because if my slide is too simple, nobody respect me. The second formula happened to be a Kenji formula which was invented by my friend Kenji from Tokyo. Kenji liked to use big, big, big vertical attachment. And because it's big, it's precise, but it may not be comfortable for the patient. For the G-set, they divide into two small attachment so two small attachments, that's g shape. Kenji's formula is a big attachment, just one. And some people ask me, what's the difference? The difference is g shape is a forgiving because too small one, if the patient didn't wear it, they still can catch up next day. But for the Kenji formula, if they didn't wear one or two day, 
they just get out of control. So Kenji approach is for unforgiving but precise. So it's perfect for the Japanese patient. He practice in Japan. Japanese patient, if the doctor say, you need to do this, and the patient goes, oh, yeah, yeah, hi. But it will not happen in the rest of the world. So to conclude, G6 is for average patient, which is young and boy. Kenji formula is highly motivated patient, self-paid female. Female is good. I don't have a problem with female. They wear the aligner so well. So I consider female is the first class human being. I have to tell you, I have terrible sexual discrimination. I prefer female. They are good. They are really good. Not like a boy. Oh, boy, terrible. I don't like those boys. So most of the time, I use Kenji formula, and I will show you why. Because they are precise. And this is a Kenji. Oh, this Kenji is a very smart guy. And Kenji and I, we share the pa same patient of golf. We love play golf. And this is my indoor driving range. So Kenji practice golf in my, in, my, in my house. Can you believe it? And I also show Kenji my the other hobby is I love to collect, collect violin. I have uh, five violin. I love my violin. And Kenji and I, we also love music, different music. I love Beethoven, classic. But when I show Kenji my violin, he was looking at this painting. And I told Kenji, hey, don't look at that. This is not acceptable. So this is just for my eyes only, not for you, OK? So back to this case. Let me ask, is this good or bad? You just hand over the plastic bag, package for 14 months, and you get this result. I consider it's pretty good. If you think about the effort you put in, that's a pretty good result. The race is just refinement. That's it. But let me remind you, that could be a lucky case. Because when you listen to speaker, most speaker they cherry pick their case. That may not represent the average case they have in their clinic. Let me give you an example. If you look at this article published last year, I consider it's the best by far. Talk about the predictability of Invisalign in four first bicuspid cases. And the result, they compare to the clean check and the, the actual result in the patient. And they find out the difference is in the incisor, they have a top loss and extrusion. Molar loss, anchorage, and intrusion. So end up with stipa. Let me give you one example. This is supposed to be easy case. Because it's severe crowding, once we lie up, it becomes easy. So my first is, what is the popular tip for anterior cross by correction? There are three popular tips that I would love to share with. Number one, biteable. Number two, tongue break. Number three, attachment design. Biteable. If you are correct, when you correct the anterior cross bar, you always need to raise the bar. So I will use the biteable on the motor, but I prefer bigger one. Bigger is better. I will prescribe a big biteable like this. Do you need to actually bound the biteable? No, you don't. It just prescribes should be okay. On the cover of the aligner, they have a projection that's, that's okay to raise the bar. Number two, tongue break. Tongue break is an active weapon. Patient use that to push the front teeth, upper front teeth forward, that correct the anterior cross bar. Number three, always design attachment on lateral incisor because lateral incisor is difficult to handle if you have anterior cross bar. So attachment design is important. So in the occlusal view, 
after nine months in treatment, looks like okay from a crucial view, and look like okay, doctor, okay, that's good. From frontal view, beautiful. But if you look at the side view, the back of view, did you see the problem? Nine months supposed to be like this, but unfortunately it become open by a severe tipping of the lower incisor. So we do have a big problem from the back of view, and people will say, oh, don't worry, we haven't finished yet, because the total is 43, we, we, we just 36, we, we have a couple to go, don't worry about it. Really? This is the end of first stage. We already finished the first stage. This is a good patient. And the result is like this. Did you see the difference between predict and achieved, predicted and achieved tooth movement? Huge. Look at that anchorage loss and look at that reach of kind of low incisor. It's pretty bad. But let me tell you, it's bad, but it is normal. If you go back to the study that I show you, talk loss, intrusion of incisor, it's normal. Motor, loss anchorage, and intrusion, that's why you get open by. So that's bad, but that is normal. So sick. One, one more time. Let's get back to this study. The reason why I like this study so much is if you pay attention to the sample size, you'll be surprised. In the very beginning, they include 69 cases. And then only 30 cases can finish the first stage. The race 39 they get object they have to refine. So can you imagine less than 50% can finish the first stage. The race is even worse. And even this best 30 case, you still get the side effect. And the side effect is intrusion and top loss in the incisor, anchorage loss and intrusion. So how can you fix it? So if you look at the big picture, which is the study, you'll be able to appreciate that this side effect is considered normal. So how to fix it? Number one, school. Number two, power reach. Number three, attachment design. Number four, over correction. I personally prefer school. So let me show you how I fix this protrusion, and gummy smile. Oh, it looks great. To move the whole dentition backward, I, we want to have a maximal anchorage. We don't want a posterior teeth to move. And this clean check did exactly like that. But can we really achieve this result in a patient? Oh, based on that study, you probably cannot. That's why we put a school and we have this precision cut to hook up this elastic. So Beethoven extraction formula number three, I want to add the school. I add four school, two incisor school to, to prevent the top loss and extrusion. The other two school is to reinforce the anchorage. So that's two incisor school. Once I add this incisor school, I can intrude and flare in the incisor. So if you have flare, because the flare is right here, very low, that's why I need to have two elastic like this. So four minus three, add four add mini school. So with this mini school up front, we have incisor school to flaring and intrusion the incisor. For the back, we can retract the whole dentition backward. We reinforce the anchorage. The incisor school, 
I put between the root is 1.5 by 8 millimeter. Posterior, I put in the IZC, which is 2 by 12 mini school outside the root. So with this school, we can produce a good mechanic. So mechanic is the key to solve this problem. Once you have the school to produce this mechanic, we you no longer need to worry about the side effect. This ball school is so good. I really love it. And people, if you are interested about this mechanic, you can find it in JDO 58, just published last month. So everything you need to know is right here. All the articles we published were we edited by my mentor, Gene Roberts. So we are hugely in, indebted to Dr. Robert, a remarkable soul. We love you. So this is the slide, and uh, this is the, the, the paper you're supposed to do. Do not believe it because I said, believe it because you take time to prove it for yourself. So my suggestion to you is start to put some school and make some mistake. What? I, are you trying to say you will make mistake? We expect that somebody will give, me, give us all the answer. Oh boy. No one has all the answer. You have to experience by yourself. Make some mistake, learn from your mistake. It's just a school, a small school. You can't really check it out. Don't worry about it. So make some mistake and in, learn from your mistake. That's 30 months in treatment. So we didn't have that kind of thumb in the anterior. Focus on the posterior segment. In this case, we want maxima anchorage. That's why we put IZC school in the posterior. And look at the profile change. Huge change. This girl would love to have a high nose and prominent, prominent chin. That's why we want to maxima anchorage. And if you look at the cephalometric superimposition, wow, you'll be surprised. We not only retract, but we also intrude the incisor because the chip complaint was gummy smile. We want to solve the gummy smile. And if you only use a liner, how can you produce this result? Well, if the aligner have the top nose and extrusion, how can you correct the deep back? It's very difficult to correct the deep back. But it's great on the computer screen. Yeah, it is great in the computer screen. But let me show you. In the patient's mouth, nine months in treatment, did you see the deep bite correction? No, the deep bite actually get worse. Did not work in patient. Terrible. So what can you do? Great on computer, but it didn't work out in a patient at school. School can solve the problem. School can solve this problem. So four minutes three, X school. With the school, you just hook out this school, you'll be able to intrude 4.5 millimeter intrusion. And it is so easy to hook out this school. For this patient, because the frenner is high, so you only need one elastic. If the frenner is low, you need two elastic. And that's the way we hook up the anterior elastic and posterior elastic. How to do that? Is that difficult? No. A liner company would not make a cut in the lingo side. So you have to cut it by yourself. The lingo cut, you have to do it by yourself. And the key is to make a flaring cut, which is wider outside, narrow inside. And that's the way to hook up the elastic. This one, is narrow and this one, the width, the entrance is wider. And you preload the elastic, the patient preload the elastic. Let me show you how to do that. 
So the patient preload this elastic, so easy to wear. And then wrap around this elastic to the screw. And the screw head is a mushroom head, big one, so it's pretty comfortable for the patient. And then the next will be hook up the class two elastic from precision cut, which the aligner company cut for you to the mini screw. And you're done. That will reinforce the anchorage. There are two ways to hook the elastic. If you have a high frenum, you use one elastic. Low frenum, you use two elastic, like this. Easy. How do you express, express the by correction? Let me show you three hard things. Number one, over correction in cream check. For all the deep by case, I always want to finish with one millimeter open by in my cream check, one or two millimeter open by in my cream check. Because I know the aligner cannot achieve this result. Number two, encourage the patient to use chill weave on the front teeth. And number three, which is the most effective way inside the school, I love this school. Take a photo. Very important tip to express the by correction. If there is a fountain of use, it has to be learning. So I encourage you to read this article. All the basic idea, basic knowledge about aligner can be found in this article published last year. Everything I talk about by far can be found in this article, which include the bicoration with this chewy up front. And you can go to the YouTube to look at all the presentation I have. Besides, there are three ways to learn more. Number one, you can go to YouTube first. And number two, you can go to the iBook store to download the iBook. We have a variety of iBook about also the different approach of also don't it? So go to the iBook store. And number three, take a workshop. Workshop is important. Although reading the article and listening to the lecture is good, but it cannot take you go to as far as you want it to go. And it is the workshop. You can experience the technique. So I encourage you to take a workshop. Once you look at how people put a mini screw, you will immediately realize how easy that was. So take a photo, and I want to see you in the workshop. But let me remind you, not this year, because I want you to stay home and stay safe. That's why we have a women this year. And I hope this year's physical separation can help ensure future togetherness. So I want to see you next year, not this year.